How we doing? Welcome back to Memphis Regionals 2018, VGC 19. My name is Ryan B. Hebert. Beside me is Patrick Munt, and we are about to get started in the final round of yeah. day one. Woo. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it, baby. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Patrick, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I'm a little bit tired, but probably not as much as like the people who are playing, but <laughs> I'm also equally excited for this. Well, now, Patrick, our players are setting up. Their teams are being shown right here, right now. They must hop right into it. Alex Underhill, Rockin', Xerneas, Crobat, Amoongus, Incineroar, Ludicolo, Yvelto, Yvelto, Yvelto. Oh my the goodness! The Bacon Bird himself. The Bacon Bird and Jeremy Rodriguez, Rockin', Xerneas, Smeargle, Lunala, Incineroar, Crobat, Toxicroak. Something very early on in this regional that we actually saw from Ashton Cox. Very, very interesting. Especially the Toxicroak, you're probably, it's probably not going to get too much shinier, especially since there is no Kyogre on um, Underhill's side. You're correct, Patrick. Although the Poison Jab from a Toxicroak could do a lot of damage onto Alex, Alex's team, into that Xerneas, and into Ludicolo as well, but it's just mm. kind of hard to tell. That Lunala, though, we saw how powerful Lunala could be earlier today in the regional. So you just have to wonder how much more, how how powerful is that Lunala going to be uh, in this game? Especially, that is very true, especially with the Shadow Shield ability acting exactly the same as Dragonite's multi-scale. Mm. Um, just reducing the damage done by any sort of attack done to it when its HP is full. Well, it looks like Alex is locked in and Jeremy is choosing his mont. He's chosen, both players are shaking their heads. We are about to begin game one in the final round. Oh, all right, I cannot wait. Let's see how they lead both of them. Um, what say you? I do think that we will probably see um, either Crobat or Lunala from Jeremy's side, just to, you know, probably get some Tailwind or possibly the safe Xerneas Smeargle. Eveltal and Crobat on Alex's side of the field with... Ooh, we, Lunala, oh, and Xerneas. Wow, a really offensive start from Jeremy <laughs> Rodriguez, but it may pay off I am a f little bit afraid of Eveltal and what it could do to that Lunala, but Xerneas could just go for the Geomancy here if it's not threatened by a taunt from that Crobat. Very true. We may also see the trait of Tailwinds this turn, since like three of the four Pokemon on this field can learn Tailwind. But do you bait the Tailwind and then put up a, a Trick Room with Lunala? I mean, but that's the thing. Why would you Trick Room if you're going to Geomancy? Unless if this is the odd slow Xerneas but I it could be a possibility swapping out the Xerneas putting up the trick room sort of swapping modes instantly on um, trying to get his opponents out of the tailwind and we do see the taunt coming out from the scrubat onto Xerneas so if it's going for the geomancy it is not happening okay knock no, off no. will the shadow shield pay off it, it will not, not. Lunala going down in a single knockoff is that a dark glasses uh black glasses Yvelto? um black glasses. well I'm sorry. it is actually black glasses which is times 1.1 and then dark aura which is times 1.3 and knockoff doubling in damage since that lunala was holding an item so that's just a massive amount of damage on top of it being four times weak very true pat and Cinderor coming on to jeremy's side of the field here that Zerny is not able to use geomancy you know if I was in Jeremy's spot right now, I've just lost a huge Pokemon, one of my restrictors to Eveltal, and <laughs> we saw from the lunchtime break, I got wrecked by it. So I'm hoping that the same fate doesn't go into, you know, for Jeremy. That's very true, and um, we just have to see how Jeremy can position himself, because since he didn't Geomancy, he still does have his power herb, so he can save that um, Xerneas for later if... Yeah if he does need it and he can try and swap out however that is probably very telling of a switch and Alex can actually easy to predict that. Evelto going for that protect because of the fake out pressure on the field. Mm. Tailwind going up here uh, getting that speed control. Alex in a very comfortable position. The moon blast yes. going straight for it because of that taunt <laughs> and flare blitz coming oh. out going right into that crowbat. Crowbat is going to be saying no, it is not going down without a fight. I mean, looking from Jeremy's perspective, that's, that was a very good call because he called that the Evelto might protect and Crobat does have inner focus, which prevents it from flinching. So Absolutely. it's just better to just get a huge chunk of damage off right off the bat with a flare blitz. You know, you got to wonder what's in the back for this Xerneas right now. Uh, looking at Jeremy's team, 
Uh, Toxicroak and Smeargle are not very defensive Pokemon. They will not want to be taking any big hits. So I see why the Xerneas is still on the field, Patrick. It's just a matter of time before it gets knocked off and then your Power Herb Ooh, is gone. Here comes a Super Flame taking away 50% of that Xerneas' is maximum HP and a knockoff getting rid of a 50% berry. Yes, the yep. Pinch Berry is, got, is knocked off from that Incineroar. Moonblast coming out from that Xerneas going into that Eveltal, Ooh. and it will be enough for the knockout, a critical knockout indeed for Jeremy Rodriguez. Eveltal <laughs> so providing so much pressure on the field, and that U-turn not enough to knock out that Crobat, but the Incineroar will be switching out, and I'm guessing the Smeargle might be coming in. That is, that is a very, well, Axel F, let's see what it is. Toxic oh, Toxicroak. Ooh, pressuring with some fake out right now, actually. And the Probably taunt being able to get... off. Oh. Now, you got to ask, if this Toxicroak fakes out the Crobat, will it be enough damage to knock it out? I am... Okay, I'm not a genius mathematician like Trevor, who's probably like a financial god. But I do believe, even with a minus one, it should be able to knock out. It may just be a roll, though. But well, we do run into another problem here, is that Incineroar has now come onto the field, so we have fake out pressure coming from both sides. Uh, mm. Toxicroak is going to be faster, but do you really want to be taking a potential fake out into your Xerneas? Or even a Flare Blitz Ooh, no. into Toxicroak? That is very true, especially with Toxicroak having dry skin actually gives it a weakness to fire. It does. Even though um, at the cost of giving it an immunity to water type attacks. Mm. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. I, we're probably going to see the exchange of fake outs probably into Xerneas and then into Crobat is my best guess. Just trying to, you know, prevent any sort of setup coming out from each other's side. Oh, the switch out coming out from Jeremy's side and we see Incineroar coming out getting the minus one onto both of uh, Alex's Pokemon. Yeah, Patrick, that was an interesting switch, not one I was definitely expecting mm -hmm. and she, yeah, Xerneas going Actually, for that Protect, not wanting to be faked out. This is very good because now Jeremy still retains the Fake Out initiative. Critical hit with the Fake Out. A taunt coming from that Crobat. <laughs> and so now you're in an interesting position where you could switch out the Xerneas into Toxicroak, but do you just Flare Blitz with Incineroar if you're Alex? I mean, I don't because, let's see, the... Um, Let's see, Jeremy's Incineroar already lost his 50% berry, so it's not really worth going for knockoff. Yeah. So, a uh, Flare Blitz probably will be the best ideal situation. Or we could see a U-turn here to gain the Fake Out initiative again. Yes, we do see the Fake Out onto Ooh. Crobat, taking it out, and the U-turn onto Xerneas, meaning that it's going to be swapping out into something else. Now, will we see the Xerneas ascend and power up with Geomancy, getting a plus two in every stat? Oh, I hope so. Let's see, we... Who will come out from Alex and say, we do see his own Xerneas. Another Xerneas. <coughs> Geomancy. Ooh. Oh. And now this is a tricky situation, my dear friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you hesitated. I was like, enemy? Oh, okay. Anyways, but yeah, as you said, this is very interesting because Alex now has fake out initiative with this Incineroar coming back in, meaning that he can fake out either one of Jeremy's Pokemon and gain an advantage. Meaning that um, if he doesn't want his Xerneas to flinch, he has to protect it, meaning that he probably allows the Xerneas to get a free Geomancy. Out. Yeah, you're completely right, Patrick. The fake out pressure here from Alex's Incineroar means that a free Geomancy is about to go up on Alex's side of the field, so it's, it's probably <laughs> going to be Geomancy v Geomancy here. We could see the potential switch out into Toxic Rogue, on Jeremy's side, uh, if there was an Assault Vest on that Toxic Croak, it may be able to take the Moon Blast, but that's an, a really big if. Fake Out coming out here, and Jeremy Ooh. took the risk. He oh. did not want to protect. He knew that the Geomancy was going to go off. But now, here's my biggest question. What is Jeremy's Incineroar going to do? I think we may see a Flare Blitz onto... Alex's Xerneas because he may just want to get as much damage off as possible, especially since it's buffing up its special defense, so you want to hit on the physical side. As Absolutely, as Patrick. I completely agree. U-turn being used again, so we're going to be having some more fake-out pressure here in this game. 
with Toxicroak coming onto the field. Players going back and forth with all this fake out pressure. Is anybody going to be able to get off anything with Xerneas? I mean, this is why people run Tapu Lele to stop the shorter <laughs> shenanigans from happening. That's why I run Tapu Lele, Patrick. <laughs> I don't know about you. I mean, for me, I personally prefer Lele over Feeny, but as from last match, Feeny with that clutch. But anyways, this is this match, not last match. Absolutely, Patrick. So, you know, fake out coming out here and... Alex Underhill not wasting any time with a Protect. Moonblast coming out from Jeremy's Xerneas going into the Incineroar, oh. knocking it out. It is not enough. That Incineroar is not living that. And I mean, now it comes down to that most Toxic Strokes are Assault Invested, and this is this is most likely as well, meaning that the Xerneas probably will not be able to KO it unless if it focuses down the Toxic Stroke with a Moonblast. But then it risks allowing this Xerneas to deal a massive amount of damage like And that. it looks like Jeremy Xerneas is faster. Dazzling Gleam coming out. Oof. Not enough. And Poison Jab should be sealing <coughs> up this first game between Alex and Jeremy. Well fought between the two of them. Man, what a heartthrob, my friend. Oh my, that was a back and forth match. I mean, at first I thought Alex had the advantage and then Jeremy pulled it out. Absolutely, Patrick. This was a really big back and forth match, and we're going to be going into a game two where Alex Underhill has to adjust. He just brought in his Xerneas way too late, and by that time, Jeremy had already had the pressure with his Xerneas, and even though he did his best to maneuver around fake out, it just was not enough. I mean, that's what you see the like, you know, the advantage of having two fake out users because you can just fake out U turn, fake out swap. Yes. It's so advantageous to prevent one of your opponent's Pokemon from moving that turn. And the other thing here is that, you know, even though Jeremy lost his Lunala at, in, in the first turn, yeah. it really didn't affect him. You know, he went down with that Pokemon and then said, okay, you know what? We can do this. We can win this. I just lost a big Pokemon, but that doesn't matter. I can pull this through. There's always a win condition, Patrick. Always. I mean, this is why you all you should always try to play out the match. You never know how any game could turn out. But exactly. we'll have to see. Will he bring the Lunal again? I highly doubt it, especially since if Alex brings the Veltal, it's yeah. it's toast. Well, noticing that there isn't any Psychic Spam except Lunala on Jeremy's side of the mm -hmm. field, we could see a potential Amoongus coming into this game uh, to do some redirection on Alex's side, maybe even get a Spore off. But we're going to have to see. Eveltal is the key to Alex's success. Uh, I'm going out of the limb in saying that, but we just saw how much pressure it induced on the field in the first game. And losing that was really the biggest turning point in the game for Alex Underhill. He's going to need to really be sure that he keeps that thing out there as long as possible. Well, I do want to bring up that this appears to be a very offensive Eveltal, seeing as how I think it was an unboosted Xerneas' Moonblast one shot immediately. And I don't believe it was a critical hit, so he does still need to be careful about playing around with his Evelta. Yeah, you're completely right. He does have to be careful, and he does need to maneuver, but if there's one thing I know is that Alex Underhill, he knows how to maneuver, and so does Jeremy. These are two great players fighting it out right now to see who's going to top cut and who has a chance to miss top cut as a 5-2. Very, very true. We will see the same start from Alex right now and the same start again from Jeremy. Like... As I know, I've said last time I was on stream, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely, Patrick. Both players here confident with their leads, and honestly, I would be. A taunt <laughs> seems perfectly, uh, perfectly great here, but here's the thing. Now that we know that Alex is tempted to taunt the Xerneas, do you use a Trick Room or even a Tailwind off of your Lunala to get some speed control? Well, the thing is, um, I believe that the Evelto outsped the Lunala, so it didn't even get a chance to move last turn. So do you opt for a Protect and just anticipate the taunt and then Moonblast that um, Evelto away? Yeah, you're completely right, Pat. It's just going to come down to who is faster. And once again, it, that comes down to speed control. Yeah, we do know that um, Alex's Crobat does have Tailwind, which can be very crucial in matching the Xerneas' his speed later on in the game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, both players taking their time to choose their moves here in turn one. Oh, we do see the swap out from the Lunala. Let's mm. see what comes in. It's the Incineroar getting the minus one onto both of the Pokemon. 
Oh my gosh. And especially Incineroar coming out when this Veltal is on the field, allowing Dark Ore to boost its knockoff and deal more damage. Taunt coming out from that Crobat oh. into the Incineroar. Knockoff coming out here oh. onto the Xerneas, outspeeding it, knocking off Power Herb. Power. What we see? Blast. The Moon Blast. Moon blast. moon blast straight away. Jeremy expecting. And oh Eveltil goes down. Right. The Bacon Bird has sizzled and fallen. That was some pretty burnt bacon, if I do say so myself. Uh, yeah, very what? true, Patrick. I do have to think. What if he has the Smeargle? Right? If he does have the Smeargle, he could follow me and potentially Geomancy somewhat safely. You right? know, it's still highly unlikely since it's Toxic Crow put him so much work. It's definitely uh, an idea, Patrick, and uh, it, it'd be one that I would try, but at this point in the game, to lose... No, <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm, uh, there's a very loud speaker going over us right now that is really distracting. Um, <laughs> but as this game is going forward, uh, the players are going to keep, keep playing here. And there we go. There we go. Uh, All right, it is finished. It is over. <laughs> we can now commentate in peace. Yes. Ivelto going down once again in that turn one is so huge. I mean, okay, so we see the Protect coming out from Alex Xerneas here. Will we see... Tailwind coming out from Crobat. Yep. Will there... That, there was no Finko coming out from Incineroar, meaning... No. Flare Blitz... Moonblast going to Xerneas. Flare Blitz going into Crobat? Oh, double up into A Xerneas. A double target into Xerneas. Alex Underhill predicting the double target. I mean, at this point, what does Crobat do besides set up a Tailwind? Super Fang. Like, try and, like, ensure that, you know, he can get knockouts later. Because if he Super Fangs that, um... Incineroar, he can sort of try and guarantee that he'll do at least 50% of its health and prevent it from getting the, the pinch barrier. Very true, Patrick. Very true. That Crobat could provide some offensive pressure with that Super Fang. We're just going to have to find out what's going to happen here. Uh, Alexander Hill protected that turn, but he's going to have to try to figure something out. Oh, we do see the Crobat swapping out. Uh, going out into the uh, Incineroar, mm. getting the minus one onto uh, Jeremy's Incineroar. We just have to see how this one plays out because could go either way from here. Oh, Geomancy oh. going off on Alex's Xerneas, and next turn, he's going to have that fake out pressure with his Incineroar. Yeah, he could just fake out that the opposing Xerneas and just proceed to Dazzling Gleam and get so much damage off and probably win game two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is looking to be like a very good situation for Alex Underhill on the field right now. Moonblast coming out from the Xerneas into Alex's Xerneas, but with that Geomancy boost, Ooh. it's only going to do a little bit, but there was a special attack drop, so that special attack on Xerneas is only plus one. We will see the Flare Blitz not doing enough, seeing how that Incineroar came in clutch, reducing the amount of damage that that Incineroar did to Xerneas. Now, the Taunt has worn off on our opponent's uh, Xerneas here, but Fake Out Pressure is probably going to cancel that for mm. at least one more turn. Very true, very true. I mean, what do you do if you're in Jeremy's situation? You're somewhat behind. What do you need to do? At this point, Patrick, you, I, if I were Alex, I'd be moonblasting the Incineroar and faking out the Xerneas. So if I was Jeremy, I mean, I want to know what's in the back, personally. We'll see the fake out going onto the Incineroar, oh. trying to prevent any any U-turns coming out. I, th I think that's actually pretty good because that way you can't continuously cycle those fake outs as you yep. did last game. And Alex predicting that Jeremy would just go for the straight Moonblast, not even powering up. And we will see that that Moonblast just does just above the amount needed to proc that pinch barrier. I think that's like, that's very cool because that means that this Incineroar can probably only take one more hit before it's gone. Yeah, I agree, Patrick. A Dazzling Gleam here really could end it for uh, Jeremy Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Oh my goodness. These last names. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, the Moonblast going from Xerneas into that Incineroar, knocking it out. There oh, it goes. The king has Flare fallen. Flare Blitz going this into Lucifer, bringing Oof. it down. There goes Xerneas. I mean, who do we still have? We have the Lunala on Jeremy's side. And who's the last one? Will it be Toxicroak or will it be Crobat? Because I don't believe... I 
he may have brought the single, but I believe that's very unlikely. Yeah, you know, we're going to have to see what is in the back here for Jeremy. Um, so we do see that Lunella coming back onto the field. And Axel F, the Toxic Rogue, coming back into this game, providing a certain amount of pressure uh, that could be helpful, especially with that fake out. Uh, you could do something interesting here with this Lunala, maybe set up some speed control in order to try to secure the next turn. That's very true. So I do believe Tailwind should be up, and um, Lunala's have been carrying Psy Shock very recently, meaning that it's going to be hitting on the physical side um, instead of special, meaning it'll do actually a decent chunk of damage to that Xerneas. Now, I believe we have seen the Protect on Alexander Hill's Xerneas in this set so far. So that is correct. he just could go for a Protect or, by the way, I mean, he could just be faked out. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a Fighting Time move going into that Incineroar as well, just trying to get it off the field as soon as possible, threatening that uh, Lunala with knockoff. Or it could just try and fake out just to prevent it from U-turning. Um, oh, and we do see Alex withdrawing his Xerneas thinking it's more valuable than the buffs that it already had. And, oh. Psych up. Oh my so god. So Alex Underhill recognizing that uh, this is the Psych up Lunala that we saw very <laughs> similarly earlier today. Oh uh, Very interesting play. So there was a reason why those stat boosts just got erased on Alex's side of the field. It's because he didn't want Jeremy to have them. It was a, it was a valiant attempt. I will give him props for the attempt, but Alex start right through it. I mean, there's, like you said earlier, Alex is really good at maneuvering into a better position, making sure that he maintains the advantage. Yeah, absolutely, Patrick. This Crobat and Incineroar are in a pretty good spot here. Uh, being able to set up a Tailwind would be really great for Alex Underhill to secure some more speed control in this game. I am curious what Lunala is going to do here. Is it going to go for a straight attack? We will see Incineroar swapping out. And that Crobat is actually the fastest thing on the field at the moment. So yes. it could easily just Super Fang, or if Alex feels as if he uh, needs to speak control, set up the Tailwind, as he does. Tailwind being set up on Alex's side of the field. Psyshock coming out, going into that Crobat. Farewell, Crobat. Oh, he's still around. <laughs> um, well, that. I guess that either... Whoa! Oh. Poison Jab going into that Incineroar slot, predicting the switch into Xerneas. That could be the game. Jeremy is fighting back so hard right now. I mean, even though that Alex does have the Tailwind, Jeremy is still trying to make sure that he can claw out the win if possible. Yeah, this is going to be a really tough one here, Pat. Both of Alex Underhill's restricted Pokemon have been knocked out. We still have a Lunala and a Toxicroak on the field. This is going to be a hard one to pull out. I gotta, I, I gotta give it to Jeremy. He's really put himself in a great position. I mean, the only thing that, because I do think, I do think Alex does have the advantage with the knockoff on Incineroar, and that Lunala really can't do much to Incineroar at all, seeing as how it resists Moonguys Beam and is immune to Psy Shock. And Ooh. it looks like the. <coughs> What move was that? That was faint. Right? Faint. Okay, yeah. A priority move. <laughs> I mean, that Incineroar most likely doesn't have Protect. Probably wanted to get some priority damage off just in case uh, Crobat did go down this turn. Moon Guy's Beam coming out from Lunala here onto the field, going into that Incineroar, but barely Ooh. doing anything to it. Flare Blitz. Flare Blitz coming out, probably going into that Toxicro. Oh, it's wow. Toxicroak being taken down here. Incineroar at a sliver of health in that Crobat. We're not even sure if that Crobat has a, a, an attacking move besides Super Fang, so this could get interesting very quickly here. Incineroar could be knocked out by the Moongeist Beam in this next turn, but we could also see a p potential Protect. Oh, Super Fang not affecting that Lunala. I mean, that reveals that that's probably the only offensive move that... Crobat has. It can't do much else besides Super Fang and Tailwind. And it appears the players are shaking hands. That oh. Crobat does not have an attacking move that can take down that Lunala. So it appears that Jeremy <coughs> Rodriguez is your round seven winner and he is going on to top cut. That is fantastic. I mean, that was a very well played match. Back and forth the entire time. And I know both of us swapped back and forth thinking, who who we thought was going to win this match. Yeah. You know, we've had a lot of weather wars today, but this was probably the most back and forth, wait, you know, 
tipsy toffee, wavy, seesaw type game that we've had. Uh, with the tide changing so commonly between the two players, uh, again, you got to give props to both of these players. They were both 5-1, both trying to reach for that top cut, and I only hope that they both make it. You know, with one player going 6-1 and another player going 5-2, we're just going to have to see what the results end up being at the end of the day here. So we're going to be right back. We're going to hopefully get Jeremy on here for our final player interview of the day. And then after that, stay tuned. We're going to be giving some thanks and recapping what we've seen today on stream. See you, see, uh, see you here real soon. How we doing and welcome back to Memphis Regionals 2018. My name is Ryan B. Hebert and I am sitting next to the round seven winner and top cut player, Jeremy Rodriguez. Jeremy, how do you feel? I feel pretty good. Um, I've had some successes in the past, but they haven't been super consistent. I've had mm -hmm. like a good performance and then a couple regionals where I'm like top 16, top 32. Uh -huh. um, given I was top 16 at the last regional, it feels good to actually make it into cut this time and I'm definitely looking forward to tomorrow. Absolutely. Now, Jeremy, you were running a very interesting team, and in fact, I believe it was very similar to Ashton Cox's team, who I just got word uh, is also making Top Cut today. Uh, any coincidence? It's a complete coincidence. Uh, oh, no, okay. we, we team built together. We, we ah, made okay. it all. Um, the team actually started off, uh, was built initially by Nick Navarre. Uh -huh. uh, it had three of the same mods, your Smeargle, Lunala, Zern, but then okay. the other three were very different. Um, I like that version of the team a fair bit. Ashton wasn't super comfortable with it, and I did agree it could definitely be improved. So in the last three days, honestly, we decided on the last three mods of the team, those being uh, Crobat, Toxicroak, and... I have a thing for forgetting my teams. Crobat, Toxicroak. <laughs> uh, Crobat, Toxicroak, and, you know, Incineroar? It was Incineroar. Yeah. No, Incineroar was there the whole time, no, but it yeah, was Crobat yeah. and Toxicroak that were the ones that were teched on. Yes, and I can't remember the last one. I'm bad. Well, uh, Zern, Lunala, <laughs> Smeargle, Incineroar, Crobat, Toxicroak. There we go. We've got all six Yeah, now. there we go, there we go. You'll notice this triple fake out with Zern. Which, yes. You know, I expected Zern to play something of a larger role today, and yeah. well, it definitely did do well. Uh, neither Zern nor Lunala were the whole restricted comes in, restricted wins the game, match yeah. finding things. The team really did have a nice balance between restricteds that were putting in work, but also non-restricted Pokemon that did well in supporting them, mm -hmm. and also put in work just on their own merit. Yeah, I definitely noticed that there was really this war of fake outs, and the restricteds really weren't doing the big pushing. It was really those supportive Pokemon next to those restricted Pokemon. Now, I, Jeremy, I gotta ask you, there was a big read in this final game where you poison jabbed into the Incineroar slot, mm -hmm. and then Alex switched in Xerneas. Were you predicting that? Uh, most definitely. Po I'm pretty confident poison jab wouldn't have carried Incineroar, uh, but my thought process there was he absolutely needed to preserve Incineroar if he wanted a chance of winning that game. Yeah. Um, because Lunala had Shadow Shield, and because of the way he was playing, I didn't think that his Crobat had Brave Bird or any other way yeah. of breaking my Shadow Shield, which means if I had low kicked there and if his Incineroar had gone down, he would have brought back in his Xerneas which would have gone down to a Moon Geist beam, uh -huh. uh, because he saw I was spooky playing the whole stream song. Yes, yeah. Um, and he couldn't Geomancy, so he had no way to boost his special defense, he would have just gone down to that. He needed to preserve Incineroar's dark typing in order to hit me, and Incineroar's special defense was useful for taking Moon Geist beam. Yes, absolutely. So, he could have left his Incineroar in as a hard read on his part. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that as a possibility, but that's a very aggressive play to make. Yeah, I very mean, true. You have to think in his shoes. He's sitting there, he's down a game. This is what determines if he makes top cut or not. And making a play that's like, I am predicting my opponent to go for a super hard read here, and then losing off of that just feels terrible. It's it's much easier to go for the safe plays, which for him was the Zern switching. Yeah, so absolutely. I felt absolutely. confident in my poison down. Yeah. It was a really fantastic play to see on stream. Some of the best play we've seen today, really. Uh, we've seen so many great players over this, you know, several different uh, you know hours that have existed here today but uh, any any shout outs to anybody out there that may be watching well Ashton obviously we built the team together um, I'm rooming with him I room with him everywhere <laughs> there you go I wouldn't be here without him literally uh, flew down with him uh, I have to shout out nails to a certain extent uh -huh. he didn't really offer much insight on the team but I wouldn't have this team right now if he hadn't built the initial team so that this is definitely in a large part the product of Nick Navarre's work. Mm -hmm. I would also like to shout out Ingrid. Uh, 
Kaminazakis. There you go. I know I got that wrong, but I'm getting better. One day I'll get it right. <laughs> uh, she was just a good friend. We tested together uh -huh. a little bit. And just general shout outs to a number of testing partners I had on Pokemon Showdown. Uh, the Wobbuffet was one of them. I think I tested with Jonathan Evans uh -huh. for a while. The community is just great and a lot of yes. people will help me get it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Hello, my audience. Thank you so much for tuning in today to, Madis uh, to Memphis Regionals 2018, not Madison. Oh my goodness, new season. It's been a pleasure to be your caster today. Tomorrow we're gonna be kicking it off. I'm super excited to have you join us. Be sure to keep an eye on Twitter. We're gonna be announcing when that's starting tomorrow. Uh, but for anything else, thank you so much for joining us here today and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.